Yesterday, NVIDIA announced the RTX 4070 and in typical NVIDIA fashion, has a separate launch for the partner and OC cards, which is today. And I'm not sure why we didn't get a founder's card from them, but that's a story for another day. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the brand new MSI RTX 4070 Gaming X Trio. As far as pricing, this is a more expensive variant of the card, coming in at around 649 US dollars, or around 1,209 Australian dollars. <laughs> wow, that's an expensive card here in Australia. As far as specs, the RTX 4070 features 12 gigs of GDDR6 memory. What makes this different to the Founders card is that this has higher boost clocks. The MSI Gaming X Trio card boosts to around 26, 25 megahertz, as opposed to the 24, 75 megahertz boost that we see on the Founders card. The MSI card also has a triple fan cooler with a huge heatsink that is almost double the size of the PCB. This variant also uses the 12 volt high power connector as opposed to an eight pin PCIe power connector. This time around, Nvidia's been a bit more lenient with what power connectors board partners can use for their cards. I suspect that by the time this video comes out and by the time this video goes live, there's gonna be a stack of cards that use a single eight pin PCIe power connector as well. So at least we don't have to convert power supplies for this new GPU. As far as testing this card, we retested a bunch of other cards that we already had on hand on our regular i9-12900K test bench. And I know people are gonna say, oh, your CPU bottlenecked and whatnot. We've used this test bench for the last while, so it makes sense for us to continue to use it until we decide to upgrade. These are also only gaming and 3D benchmarks. We might cover content creation later, but only if there's enough interest. There's also some cards missing from the testing, and these are cards that we just don't have anymore, so we couldn't retest those. Let's kick it off with the 1080p benchmarks in Windows. Yep, we did Linux testing as well. At lower resolutions, we're seeing this become a lot more CPU bound. At 1080p, there's no surprises here for me personally, and this really shouldn't surprise you either, given that GPUs at 1080p have been CPU bound for many, many years. With Superposition, we see some very different results here, given that the 1080p Extreme Benchmark that we use for this is highly GPU bound. And this is really a worst case scenario, and the 4070 does come in quite far behind the RTX 3080 12 gig. In Cyberpunk 2077, we retested everything since they upgraded this game to FSR 2.1. And we also use FSR for all the cards since it's supported on every GPU because comparing DLSS and FSR is just not a fair comparison. We didn't use any ray tracing here either because we wanted to even the playing field and the 4070 is about as fast as the RTX 3080 12 gig. Finally, onto Horizon Zero Dawn, we see almost what we saw with Cyberpunk. We see some fairly odd behavior with the 4070. It is faster than the 3090 here, but remember, once again, we are very CPU bound with this benchmark. But let's move on to 1080p benchmarks in Linux. The way I got this to work was I used a newer kernel and I manually installed a beta NVIDIA driver that's on the NVIDIA site and that driver compiles its own kernel modules. So it makes even unsupported GPUs work. We found this to work in the past and it also not to work, but we got lucky this time. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider was getting some fairly decent performance with the 4070 just beating a 3090 Ti. And if this result surprises you, it shouldn't. We're still very, very CPU bound. Anything can happen here. With Superposition, we're seeing very different results here. As I mentioned with the Windows testing, the same goes with Linux. This is highly GPU bound and the 4070 comes in pretty far behind the rest of the field. And as mentioned earlier, cards like the 3070 and 3070 Ti, we just don't have any more for testing. I would love to have had those results in this testing for Linux, but unfortunately, we just can't test that because we don't have them. In Cyberpunk 2077, we run the Steam version with Proton, and we usually see some pretty excellent performance in general. Some of these cards just don't do as well in Linux with Proton. However, I think the 4070 results here are rather quite good. Finally, in Horizon Zero Dawn in Linux, we also run this with Proton the same way, and this performance is to be expected with it coming in just behind the 4070 Ti. Let's move on to 1440p benchmarks in Windows, and we run the same tests again, 
just at a different resolution. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider in Windows at 1440p, we are more GPU bound than we were at 1080p, and we start to see the sweet spot of the RTX 4070. With superposition at 1440p, we ran this with no depth of field and motion blur turned off, and we saw the 4070 actually come in behind the 3080 12 gig by a considerable margin. In Cyberpunk 2077, we see the RTX 4070 is coming in behind the 3080 12 gig by about 12 frames per second. And lastly, onto Horizon Zero Dawn at 1440p, we see the RTX 4070 coming in at around 12 frames per second behind the RTX 3080 12 gig again. All right, 1440p in Linux, we ran the same test again. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider 1440p, we're more GPU bound and we start to see the sweet spot in Linux for the 4070 as well. And 1440p is really where this card starts to shine. With superposition at 1440p, this one is a little bit deceiving since we don't have a 3080 available for testing. The only one we've got now is in Claire's computer and I don't wanna rip her GPU out because she needs to use it for work. And it's kind of hard to see a comparison, but this should still give you a decent idea of the performance anyway. You can kind of fill that gap in yourself. In Cyberpunk 2077 with the 4070, it's doing quite well and only coming in around about five frames behind the 4070 Ti. Lastly, in Horizon Zero Dawn in Linux, the 4070 performs as expected. Not much more to add here. What most of these benchmarks have told us so far is that the performance for 1080p and 1440p is pretty strong. But this is all where these benchmarks get turned on its head because we ran the same test again at 4K to give you an understanding of where the real strengths and weaknesses of the RTX 4070 are. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider 4K, we see the 3080 12 gig pull right ahead of the 4070 by around 10 frames per second. With superposition at 4K, we see the same thing being echoed here with the 3080 12 gig pulling right away from the RTX 4070. In Cyberpunk 2077, we see that the 4K performance falls off a cliff gets absolutely trounced by the RTX 3080 12 gig, only being one frame faster than the RTX 3070. And I retested this quite a few times and I found this result to be pretty odd. So I don't know what's going on here. Lastly, onto Horizon Zero Dawn at 4K in Windows, we see the exact inverse of what we saw with Cyberpunk with the 4070 being a bit faster than the 3070. I mean, you can see this graph right here. That's quite a bit faster. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider in Linux at 4K, we see that the performance is actually pretty good with it coming in at around 19 FPS on average behind the RTX 4070 Ti. With superposition at 4K, we're seeing the same thing being echoed with the 4070 compared to the 4070 Ti. There's nothing too surprising here. In Cyberpunk 2077 in Linux at 4K, the performance is fairly average. So again, nothing too surprising here. And lastly, in Horizon Zero Dawn in Linux at 4K, the fact that the 4070 can do 4K60 is decent, I guess. It could have done a lot better, but you know, we're limited by not having proper drivers from Nvidia for Linux. So that's that. We ran our one hour stress test in Ida64 on the MSI RTX 4070 Gaming X Trio in our 18 degree climate controlled office and didn't see the GPU temp rise above 71 degrees over the one hour stress testing period. Not only that, we didn't see the hotspot temperature rise above 72 degrees, which I thought was pretty interesting. We're running this on an open air test bench and the results in a closed system, they're just gonna be different from what we get here. We include this result because all of our GPU tests are done on open air test benches in the same environment, which means all of our thermal testing is consistent with everything that we've tested across the board. This makes it easy for you guys to understand in the long run. As far as the power consumption, we observed the card hitting a board power draw maxing out at around 215 watts at full load over the period of one hour as well. What are my thoughts on the GeForce RTX 4070 in general? Overall, I think that Nvidia has really tried to position itself at a competitive price point based on the median prices that we see in today's market, right? Really think about that. The GPU market is very different from what we saw two years ago. Overall, everything is more expensive. And I think at this point, I've accepted that it's just not gonna get cheaper anytime soon. And I'm not saying that that's okay, that everything is more expensive. 
it just is more expensive. The cost of living has gone up, technology prices have gone up, your interest in channels like ours have gone down, and inflation is also at an all time high. Unfortunately, this is the world that we live in at the moment, so make sure you subscribe so I can sleep better at night. Why does anyone watch Gear Seekers anymore? It makes me sad. Anyway, I'll come out and say it, the 4070 is by no means a terrible card. It's almost actually decent value if you're looking to upgrade from let's say a 1070 or a 2070. The price could be a bit better, but we have to accept reality. Nvidia is selling less because the demand is less, so they raise the price to make up the difference. It's business. Nvidia is not our friends. They're a business. That includes the board partners too. If Nvidia can't pass savings on to the consumer, they also won't pass it on to the board partners, so the prices are just gonna stay as they are. The most compelling thing about the 4070 is that it actually shows us that if you wanted to buy a high-end Radeon 6000 GPU or a 3080 for less than the cost of the 4070, you're actually not gonna miss out on much performance. Sure, you'll lose things like DLSS 3.0, but is that really that bad? I gotta say, what I find really offensive though is the Australian pricing. We're getting absolutely screwed by exchange rates and import taxes at the moment, but again, that's a, that's a story for another day. I just can't believe that it's just so bad for us here in Australia. It's very hard to be a tech enthusiast here. Overall, I gotta say that this is not a terrible card and it's not terrible value considering a few things. The current global financial climate it's just not good. It could always be better, but that's not for me to say. Not only that, as more demanding titles come out, we've seen that more VRAM is a good thing. And 12 gigs is looking like it's slowly becoming the recommended VRAM size for many newer titles. It's good to see a mid-range card from Nvidia sporting 12 gigs of VRAM. It's almost like AMD did that three years ago with their mid-range cards. I don't know. Maybe they will see what AMD was doing. Anyways, if you're interested in the MSI RTX 4070 Gaming X Trio, it's going for around 649 US dollars or around about, I said this at the start of the video, 1,209 Aussie dollars. And the card launches right now. And given how the GPU market is right now, you'll probably be able to buy one at launch. At the end of the day, all I'm doing is giving you numbers from stuff that we found and it's up to you to make a decision on whether or not you're interested in this card, or if it's worth your hard earned money. I can't make you do anything, but what I can make you do is comment and let me know what you think about this new card. And not just this MSI card, I mean the 4070 in general, because we didn't get a founder's card, we couldn't have content out yesterday. I don't know what's going on with Nvidia, but we've missed two founder's cards now. We've got a 4090 founder's, I don't know what's going on. Anyway, Nvidia, you're probably gonna see this. Where's our founder's card? <laughs> if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do. You know, tell us what you hated about it. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. I haven't said an intro in a long time. I mean an outro. I don't even know how to make videos anymore. Where have we been? Where have we been, Claire? Asleep. People are like, where has Gear Seekers been for the last month or two? Crying crying because no one watches our videos anymore. It's very sad. But on the plus side, we've got some really cool videos coming out. Oh, we've just been planning stuff in the background. That's all it is, right? We work on things on the background to keep it moving. It just sucks that we spend so much time trying to plan cool stuff and it takes away from actually making videos. But you know, there's only two of us. There's not much more we can do. Thanks for watching. I'm out of here. Why am I complaining to you guys? You don't care.